So we pray tonight, this is the last meeting. May you end on a positive, Lord. This is the harvest time. It's going to be a positive one, Lord. So we pray the Holy Spirit just take control. Bless your word, Lord, as I commit myself and the service and everyone into your hand. In the precious and wonderful name of Jesus Christ, we ask it. And the church shall say, Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles while we're standing. 1 Kings 18.41, Joel 2.23-25, and Ephesians 1.3. First Kings 18 and verse 41. Just one scripture there. And this is just after uh, Elijah's servant came back from going up seven times the mountain. And then he, t he told him he seen a cloud like a man's hand. And Elijah said unto Ahab, get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. Oh my. I feel there's a sound in this camp tonight of abundance of rain. And then Joel chapter 2. Thank you, Brother Olu. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Joel chapter 2, verse 23 to 25. Be glad, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and it will cause to come down for you the rain, for the former rain and the latter rain in the first month, and the floor shall be full of wheat, and the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And then Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 3. According as he has chosen us, Brother Isaac read this one, in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ, to himself according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, when he hath made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through the blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, when he hath bound to, uh, toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself." May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. You may be seated. So I'd, I'd like to just uh, take a title here. Prepared ground for the harvest. Amen. You need to have prepared ground. If you're going to have a harvest. So that's my title. Prepared ground for the harvest. Then my subject, Brother Olu. I will restore, say the Lord. And then my inspiration. I hear the sound of abundance of rain. I hope you can hear that tonight. My, there's a sound of abundance of rain. Now, Brother Olu, I found, uh, Brother Ovid, I found this quote. It's in uh, the second miracle. That's the title of Brother Bam's message. And it was preaching Toledo. Ohio, USA. He says here, let's bow our heads. Lord, now the service is almost ready to begin again. It's the closing night here among this lovely people. My. So yeah, I find myself at the closing meeting amongst this lovely people. Wow. God, how did you ever bless me in such a way to bring me up and let me be able to stand and talk to such an audience of people? Lovely born again Christians. Oh God, I just love you for it. And there's no words that I can find to express my thanks that you let me meet these ministers and these people out here. Lovely people, your people, the very cream of the crop. Wow. So I'm addressing the cream of the crop. Lovely people, born again people, washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. The people that has the same story like us. My. Your people. He says the very cream of the crop of the earth's harvest. Wow. That's beautiful. He says 
your people, the very cream of the crop of the earth's harvest. And right at this time, the inspiration is harvest time. And here you sit in a crop. It's the last meeting. And he says, yeah. And not only that, to meet them and to know them, but to have fellowship with them through the son, thy son, Christ Jesus. And to know that I'm a fellow citizen with them and heir of the same kingdom of God. We journey through earth going to heaven where we'll associate together throughout ceaseless ages. Through aeons of time, we'll be together forever. Not where we'll be sick again or not where we'll all be in buildings and have to crawl across the country to pray for each other, but where there'll be no sickness, there'll be no old age, or there'll be no cripples and no blinds, but we'll be young there forever and we'll be in the likeness. What the glorious time to be. He says, oh, Father, I just feel like rising my hands up and just screaming as loud as I can to give vent to the feelings that's within me of the appreciation of all that you've done. Don't you feel like that? You feel like screaming. You feel like shouting. You feel like giving vent to the feelings that you, you have. Let's work these next words. Bless the city, Lord. Sure. Bless the people, the lawmakers of the city. And God grant that there'll be an old-fashioned revival. Sweep the city, Lord. That these anointed ones that are sitting here in the presence tonight, these ministers of God represented here on this platform and out there in the audience, oh God, charge their lives with a new vision. With a new power. And may there be just abundance of rain from everywhere. My brother, did you hear that? May there be abundance of rain just from everywhere. So I say tonight, brother, I hear the sound of abundance of rain. The prophet prayed it. He was in the last meeting. He was closing out in a convention. And he said, the lovely people. And he says, oh God, he even says, bless the law makers. Wow. He says here, change, uh, uh, give them a new vision with new power and may there just be abundance of rain from everywhere, Lord, coming into the churches. Hear the prayer of your sermon now and now keep us ever in your world. Give us great service tonight for we ask it in the name of thy child, Jesus Christ. It's almost as if the prophet was in this meeting, brother. So I say tonight, I claim that rain. I claim that power tonight. I claim the healing power to come down in the service tonight. I speak it over the audience in the name of Jesus Christ. So it's up to you to receive it. It's up to you to make use of it. To take it and say, that's mine. I'm making it my own tonight. Oh, hallelujah. My I don't know if I, maybe I must read it now before I go on, uh, Brother Theo. What a striking scripture this is here. And uh, I think I read it to Brother Anthony. So I feel like Brother Olu felt and Brother Isaac, the burden for the people that if you haven't gone free yet, the Bible says Jesus stood at the last day of the feast and he stood up and said, if any man thirst, let him come. And take off the waters of life freely. So this is the last meeting. You better make use of it. If you didn't go free. Here's one more service. Where the Holy Spirit is speaking direct to you. And say change. Turn your life around. Come on we can't play church. We got to get desperate. This is the last meeting. And if I didn't get my breakthrough. Lord tonight let it be my breakthrough. Let this be the service. Where I dedicate my all. I give my everything. This could be your last chance brother. And as the apostle was saying, don't say there's still four months to the harvest. No, this is harvest time. I can't promise you tomorrow. I don't know about next week. But I know tonight there's an opportunity that you can get right with God. And your life can be changed. And you can be turned around. And the power of God can come upon you. And your life will never be the same again. Woo, hallelujah. My. So listen, listen to the scriptures in Proverbs 10 verse 5. He that gathereth in summer is a wise son. But he that sleepeth in harvest is a son that causeth shame. 
Wow. So I'm saying this before I'm starting to preach. Don't sleep in the time of the harvest. If you missed it, this, all these six meetings, well, yes, the last meeting, number seven. If you were sleeping, well, wake up tonight. Say, I'm not going to bring my father's shame. I'm not going to let his name be dragged through the dust. I'm not going to be a wise son tonight. And don't bring him shame. Say, Lord, I'm waking up. And listen, the seven thunders wakes us up anyhow. So you ought to be awake. You can't be sleeping in the time of harvest. So if you, you want to make this opportunity tonight, well, make it tonight, brother, sister. Because if you're sleeping in, in the time of the harvest, you're bringing shame on the Father. Sure. Oh, my goodness. So you better be on fire tonight. You better, your life must be changed, man. We can't come in year after year, convention to convention, we go back the same. You must say, you know what? I wrote somewhere there, I don't know what's the level of your expectation coming to these meetings. My level is very high, brother. I came here, and if you read the Bible, it says there in Matthew 13 that uh, the seeds were sown. But about Theo, there's something laying right there, brother Isaac. He said there in Matthew 13, that the, the, the seed that fell on good ground. Listen now, Matthew 13. Jesus said, some brought hundredfold, some brought sixty, and some thirty. But that's all in the good ground. So how come there's a different levels? Oh. From the good ground, there was different levels. So it depends on your expectancy. What did you come for here tonight? For thirtyfold? 60-fold? I came for a hundred-fold, brother. Hallelujah. I came for a hundred-fold. I, I refuse 30. I refuse 60. 100 is God, brother. You see, 30 is the outer court. 60 is the inner court. But 100 is the holy of holies. There's a kind of glory, brother. So we're not settling for less. Don't let the devil let you settle for less. There's more of God. There's more power. There's more anointing. There's more of God to receive, brother. Woo! Hallelujah. I feel the anointing on that one, man. I didn't know if I'm a saint, but the Holy Spirit laid it on my heart, brother Pinker. So don't settle for 30. Now, I'm not even speaking, brother Delhi, of the stony, thorny, and the rockies. I'm speaking about the good ground. At three different stages, go read it. And in Matthew, Christ counts from the top down. He says, hundredfold. Sixty. Thirty. Matthew takes it a different way. But we preach most of the time from Matthew 30. So it depends what's your level of expectancy. Because you get what you expect. So if you came here just to criticize, you'll get enough to criticize. If you come here just to be in the convention, that's only 30%. If you come here just well to show your face and to let the pastors know I'm here, that's 60%. But if you came here and I said, I'm not leaving, not until you give me the Holy Spirit. I'm not leaving, not until you fill me with your power. That's 100%, brother. You see, God deals in the hundred folds. Ooh, hallelujah. My, I always wondered how could the same ground produce threefold? So that's why I say tonight, don't sleep in the time of harvest. If you sleep in by now, you should be what the ministers preach, man. Brother, I tell you, this was dynamic, man. This was powerful. It should, it should make you go home so enthused that I'm going to serve God better. I'm going to be on fire. I'm going to be a laborer. I'm going to be a worker. God needs more laborers. So I'm going there back home. I'm not just going to sit back and watch things. No. Pastor, what can I do? Brother Isaac, what can I do? Brother Peter, where can I help? I want to be a laborer. 
Hallelujah. And a laborer doesn't mean preaching. Hallelujah. It means praying. It means laying before God. It means calling upon the name of Jesus. Praying for the shepherds. Praying for them. That's what it means, brother. A laborer doesn't mean preaching. Come on. We settling for hundredfold tonight. We don't want 30. We don't want 60. We want hundredfold. Ooh, hallelujah. My, 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 my. So I don't know what's, what's your level of expectancy in these meetings. But brother, for myself, I came, brother Theo, to put my shoulder to the wheel and knowing the burden we have and we yet to pull that last sheep. We yet to say, come on, young person, you can make it, man. This is our story. You heard Brother Pasolu this morning. The story of our lives. The story of us. And while he was preaching, I, I always remember the quote where Brother says, when you spell Jesus, it's J-E-S and us. So us is in Jesus. Ooh, hallelujah. Us is in Jesus, man. Your name, us, us. Our story is in Jesus. So why are you afraid, man? Show the devil on whose side you are. Jesus, us. Jesus, us. Brother says, Jesus, eternal salvation for us. Ooh, hallelujah. Oh, brother, I don't know if I'm going to preach tonight, man. Come on. Hallelujah. So, I don't know what your level of expectation is. So, God bless you. You may be seated. So, he says here in works is faith expressed. The word of God is a seed and must, listen, the word of God is a seed and must have the ground prepared beforehand. If you sowed seed, just throw it out there on the ground, it would do no good. The birds would pick it up. You throw it among the thistles and thorns, it will choke. Pretty soon, Jesus' parable said, so the ground has to be made ready first. So God in sovereign grace prepares the heart first. He prepared you, listen, before the foundation of the world, you received him in this age. What? He prepared you before the foundation of the world to receive him in this age. So there's no way you're going to escape. You can be running, you can be arrogant, you can be indifferent, but God is on your track, brother. If your name and you and his thought, well, you're going to come, brother. You're going to come because God is, is in his sovereign grace. He says here, prepares the heart first. He prepared you before the foundation of the world to receive him in this age. He foreknew you by his foreknowledge and ordained you to eternal life. He knew you, therefore he prepared you. The reason you, you staggered out of these things and staggered into what you have now, it was God leading you to the place where he had ordained for you to be. If this, if this ground isn't prepared beforehand, it can't grow. So God didn't prepare you now the day you got saved, the day you came into the mess. No, you were prepared way before the foundation of the world. You better listen to me tonight so that you can see where you're standing and your position and what is speaking to you and what is calling you. Why do I feel so convicted? Why does the Holy Spirit condemn me? Because your name is on the book. Oh, hallelujah. You were in God's mind, Brother Olus. Brother Olus said, the ground was prepared, unquote, before the foundation of the world for the seed. He prepared you and ordained you to receive him in, in this age. You can't help it. That is why you can't get away from him. His sovereign grace prepared your heart to receive the promised word for this age. That's the reason you staggered from this and you staggered out of, from that and out of those things that could not satisfy your soul until you came into the message of the hour. Woo! Hallelujah. Until you came into this message, something satisfied you, brother. Hallelujah. Your soul. Until you came into the message, you knew it was right. Prepared ground from the foundation of the world. Without you, there is no harvest. Can I say that again? Without you, there's no harvest, brother Peter. So your name is on the book. Come on, man. Don't keep up the harvest. Come and give your life to Christ. Come and get right with God. Because without you, there's no harvest. Yeah. 
My. So without you, there's no harvest. He says here, yeah, question and answers. He says, when in God's own mind, he foresaw us and predestinated us by his foreknowledge before the foundation of the world. Oh, brother, if that wouldn't make the church get up and run through the aisles. Listen, Bru Branham. Listen to the prophet getting excited. The first quote also. He says, I feel like screaming to give vent. Yeah, he says, man, it, it should make us want to get up and run through the aisles. Think of it. You are born again before the foundation of the world. God put your name on the Lamb's book of life. And Christ died. Send the Holy Ghost here to call you to eternal life. You have received it. He sealed you. You are there till the day of redemption. He says, hallelujah. It should make us run through the aisles, brother. It should make us shout. It should make us dance. It should make us excited. It should make us give our lives to Christ. We must be excited, man. We must have something uh, to rejoice over. Hallelujah. If the prophet felt that way, why can't we do it? Come on. Every no praise demon, we bind you tonight, man. We're going to worship God. We want God to be worshipped. God loves to be worshipped. He dwells in the praises of his people. When he's worship, brother, that's the time he comes down, brother Solomon. When the people reach out, when they forget who they are, when they die to themselves, and to know that your name is on the book, Pasolo, that's something, man. He said it should make us run through the aisles. Shout and jump. Praise God. Forget who's next to you. Come on, get beside yourself. Give him a shout. Give him praise. Amen, Brother Paul. Amen, Brother Olu. Amen, Brother Cosmos. Brother Solomon. Brother Isaac. Amen, Brother Anthony. Brother Moses. Come on. Woo, hallelujah. My, 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 my. Woo, hallelujah. The devil's in trouble tonight, brother. I tell you, Satan is in trouble. That sickness is going to leave your body. You're going to be changed. You're going to be born again. You're going back a different person, brother. You're not settling for just 30-fold. You're not settling for 60-fold. We want a hundred-fold. God loves a hundred-fold. Amen. He says he'll leave the 99 and he goes after the one. You know why he goes after the one? Because the hundredfold is not <laughs> complete. That's why he goes after them. God wants a hundredfold, brother. He leaves the 99, gets up, carries that sheep back because he wants his fold to be full. So your level of expectancy tonight must be a hundredfold, brother. So he died, send the Holy Ghost here to call you to your eternal life. So you were always eternal. The story of your book didn't start here. Way before the foundation of the world. Ooh, hallelujah. The Holy Spirit follows the blood all the way from the book of redemption. He says here in the seed, uh, seed of discrepancy. He said the seed of God, the word of God. Jesus said in a certain place that the word is a seed. And the very seed will bring forth of its kind. Now I like what Brother Olu said. Because I was going to say it. The seed has the power to transform itself. So the law, Brother Isaac, lays in the seed. So in you is the seed. How are you going to get away from God? It has the power to transform itself. Oh, hallelujah. I might not know how to praise him. I might not know how to do. But somehow something changes me. I forget my status. I forget all who I am. Out of what family I come. No. Why the Holy Ghost, the seed in the soul is quickened by the Holy Spirit.
And just for interest's sake, Brother Isaac, I checked up and I got it there. It will take too much time to read all the quotes. I went and go look where Brother Branham speaks of 30 and 60. I couldn't find it. Every time he prays, he says hundredfold. I couldn't find it. Maybe if you study a bit more, but the short time I had, I couldn't find nowhere where he speaks of 30 or 60. Every time the prophet, and it's like 60 quotes, it's hundred. Hundredfold. So you see, we don't want to live in the outer court only. Some people came there. And they lived there for 20 years. They didn't move on. Some managed to get to the 60%, the outer court. And they came there for 20 years. But listen, man, I want to tell you a secret. Did you know there's another court? The Holy of Holies? That's where the presence of God dwells. That's where the Shekinah glory. They say there's no light there. But there's only one light, and that's a pillar of fire that hangs between the cherubims. And they say, listen, that place is so small, it only has place for one. So you can't take your neighbor in, you can't take your friend or your buddy. You go alone into the Holy of Holies. God deals with individuals. He don't deal with a group of people. Today in this convention, he's speaking to individuals. And they say the Holy of Holies was so small, it was only enough for one man. Pitch dark. Only the pull of fire. Brother Peter, but you find people that's 20 years in the message, still living in the outer court. Coming to church, paying their tithes, being in service. That's all they have. And the 64 maybe got to the outer court. You know, they're a bit more desperate. But it's still not hundredfold. You need to get to the Shekinah glory. Because when you eat in the presence of God, a dead rock, a rod, you speak of harvest. There was harvest right in the Shekinah glory. A dead stick came to life overnight. It budded, it blossomed, and it bloomed overnight. There was a harvest, right? You see why you're not coming to harvest? Because you're still in the outer court. Get into the inner court where the presence of God is and your life will blossom out, brother. Bloom, bring forth blossoms, fruit, almonds. It did that, brother, when it got in the presence of God. So please don't settle for less. Tell God now, tell him now while you sit there, before you come in the prayer line. Say, Lord, if you heal me, Brother Bram would always ask the people, if God heals you, why do you want healing? What are you going to do after that? Do you go back to your old ways? Or do you say, Lord, if you heal me, I'm going to serve you. I'm going to change my life. So you must tell God that now already, and you're going to see why it's needed to tell him. So the word is a seed and every seed will bring forth of its kind. And now if the Christian, the children of God, the children of the kingdom has become the seed of God, then they must be the word of God. The word of God manifested in the age that they are living in. For the promised seed of that age, God gave his word at the beginning. And each age had its seed, its time, and its promises. So in this, this last age, harvest time, Seed, time, promises. Oh, brother, how are you going to escape that? Seed is given. Time, tonight is time. And there's promises for this age. That's why we, it's so easy for us to prophesy over you from the words of Malachi 4. We take that promise and we prophesy over you what Malachi 4 said. What he revealed. There'll be a harvest time. There'll be... He says, may something be done tonight that will quicken that life, Lord, to a realization of the message of the end time in which we are living. So each age had its seed, its time, and its promises. Okay, seed of discrepancy. Now, we live through Luther's age, Wesley's age, Mes uh, Methodist age, all down through the ages, and the Pentecostal age, and each age is given a promise of the word, and the people of that age that manifest that promised word is the seed of that age did you hear that so you mean luther was the seed of his age 
Wesley was the seed of his age. The Pentecostals was the seed of their age. What about our age? What about those people that's here, brother? Then that means they are the seed of God. And they fulfill the promise of this day. And they become the seed of God. Take that Satan. These people, you can't touch them, man. You can't have them. They are the children of God. They're the seed of God. They come from God and they're going back to God. I love the Isaac. I say it about myself. You say it for you. According to what Jesus said here, they are the children of the kingdom. That's right. The manifestation of the Holy Spirit operating through the children is those seed of the kingdom at that age. So the Holy Spirit operating through you is the, makes you the children, is the seed of the kingdom of that age. So there's no other ages after that. I don't know of any other age, but I know about this age. So that's why I'm preaching now. And that's why I feel the way I feel now. Because I don't know, I can't promise you another age. I don't know about tomorrow. There's Los Angeles shaking. Look how quick that came, brother. The whole world was sleeping. And yet God just sent the earthquake and shook them, brother. And when they thought it's all over, he sent a bigger one. 7.1, brother. And after that, more and more. And brother says, one day she's going to go beneath the ocean. Now, if that is happening so suddenly, how suddenly won't it come to you and me? So tonight, I feel the presence of God speaking to you tonight. Say, come, my child. I love you, man. Suddenly, he'll come to you, man. My, the people that manifest the word is a seed for that age. And the seed will bring forth a harvest. Must bring forth a harvest. The Holy Spirit operating through his children is the seed of the kingdom. She is the literal spoken word seed pride. Right? Brother Paul, the seed of the age is to manifest the promised word of that age. So you're not just here by the way, just living and going to work, coming back. No, you're here to manifest something. The people want to see God again. How are they going to see God again? My, it says in the end time evangelism by these messengers, witnesses, we see we find out what crop we are in. So he's speaking of two crops here. Look what crop you're in this morning. Look what crop we in. Why he said on this side, these signs will be falling them that believe. They'll be mocked, scoffed, and like the days of Noah, there will come this other group. Back here making fun of them. Heady, high-minded, having a form of godliness, denying the very thing that you are professing. So you can see what crop you're in. See, these true messengers of today, Jesus foretold that would be Satan with his message. So there's two groups in the time of harvest. So you must see in which group you are. Oh, brother, I know where I am. I don't know about you, but where I am, and where these men are, that's why I'm identified with them. I'm identified with them because they know where, which group they are in. Ooh, hallelujah. He says here, Satan with his message, and his messengers would have this going. He says here, and Christ now, his messenger would have this going. These signs shall follow them that believe. See, Satan's messengers would be having a form of godliness. His messengers would have these and then he comes back to Christ. His messengers would have these signs. Taking up serpent. Drinking deadly things. Casting out devils. Laying hands upon the sick. And that's what we're going to do tonight. That's what this group is going to do. That's why you were raised up brother. For this time. For a, a time as this. Lay hands on the sick, receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Signs and wonders now. We're in one of the crops and we're at the end time. So when it comes to the end time, like Brother Olu was explaining, and so did Brother Ovid, and the different ministers, that end time is harvest time. So when he says here we're the end time, we're in the harvest time. So you're in one of these crops, criticizing and scoffing, or believing the promise with the signs and wonders falling. Satan crop 
bring sickness and disease, but God's crop is commissioned to cast out devils. Lay hands on the sick, being baptized with the Holy Ghost. And that's what we come to do tonight is to cast out demons. That's why I feel the way I feel, brother. It's because we're going to cast out demons. And you know what brother says? The preaching of the word cast out demons. So by the time when you come, you only receive your promise, but you're already free. What made you free, brother Raymond? The word of God. My. My, and I wrote here, maniac. Listen, you remember the man that came up? The maniac? Brother Peter, and he was going to tear Brother Branham apart. And I met one of the ministers that was in that service, Brother Theo. He told me first hand news. He says there was about 300 ministers here. And they were falling over one another, jumping over the platform. And that prophet stood there. And then the police came after the man. They want to arrest him. He said, no, this is not a natural battle. This is spiritual. He challenged the spirit of God. Woo, come on, man. We had a prophet, man. We had an example seed, man. Hey, son of God's seed will produce son of God's seed. Come on. That's our story. What Peter had, we must have. What Paul had, we must have. What brother Branham had, we must have. So the mania came up and the police wanted to rest his brother and says, no, leave him. It's not the natural battle. He, he defied the spirit of God. And then the, the police backed off and he came up. And brother man, you know the story. He said, all of a sudden, here come that love spirit. And he looked at the man and he said, this is some other son. Some little girl's daddy. But he says, because you challenge the spirit of God. You see, that was the difference there. That's what David had against, the, 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 against Goliath. How can he defy the armies of the living God? Brother, you don't speak against the church of God. I don't care in what condition they are. They are the armies of the living God. So brother, says, as he came up, he could feel his spit in his face. And the man came up to hit him. And he says, because you defy the spirit of God tonight, you fall across my feet. He says, and he fell there. Now watch this. Oh, we serve a mighty God, man. He says, right here, there was people in court stretchers, wheelchairs. He says, and when those demons saw their main demon lane, he says, they jumped out to those people and that people got up and they got healed. Woo! Come on, come on. Come on, man. We serve the same God. We serve the same God, Brother Johnny. We serve the same God, man. We serve the same God. My, 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 my. He said, what happened when they saw the chief demon being defeated? He says, all the impies, they got out to the people and they got healed just jumping up without even being prayed for. You speak of faith. You speak of a story. Brother, that's our story. That's what we're coming back to. That's what we want. That's what we're looking for. Is what Brother Branham had. Son of God must produce Son of God's seed. You remember when a snake but Paul, he just came and he shook it off in the fire. Tonight I want to say the fire is here. If a snake has put on you, shake it off tonight. Shake it off in the fire. Shake it off in the Holy Ghost. Shake it off tonight. Son of God seed produces Son of God seed. My. So when those, oh God. Woo, when those impies saw the major demon, brother, I can see here in Trinidad. This weekend, brother, the major demon ran for his life and the impies is all behind him because he has a people in the land who under their messenger will become the final voice to the final age. They become God's mouthpiece. They speak for God. God is in them. Hallelujah. God is in you. God is in you.
that's what harvest time is. Is to let you know that God is in you. Oh. Come on. Praise God, man. If you seek praise Him tonight, you'll feel the difference. You'll see the difference. Can you imagine the impy demons running for their lives? They came out to the people, said, hey, our chief demon is laying here. Lights out. It's not a spirit. It's not a natural fight. It's a spiritual fight that we are busy with, brother. We fight it against demons. We fight it against devils. And every demon we will conquer. In the name of Jesus Christ, we will conquer. We will have the overhand of him, brother. My, he says the Roman caterpillar, he says here in restoration of the bride tree, the Roman caterpillar started eating on that bride tree and he took it all the way. Now brother Olu, what you preach on the story of us, they say the miracle wasn't so much that he could change five loaves, two fish and feed 5,000. How could people follow him for three days? What was he telling them? <laughs> what was he telling them? That they forgot they must go home. They followed him. So his story, brother, man, he must have been just, just, just dishing it out and giving it. And the Bible says, uh, uh, this man says that the, the, the miracles not so much the fish and the bread. But how can three days they were hanging on his words? It's because of the story he told. Oh my. Oh, man, I feel a presence here already. I don't know if I must get on with the quotes or must I just go by inspiration. And whatever he drops in my heart, I'll speak it. I won't keep it back. I won't keep it from you. It's because it's for your soul. I'm not. Listen, we are not seeing your flesh. We are not seeing your inner man. We're going way past that to the inside, inside, where the germ of life lays, brother. That's where we are going with the presence, with the ark of God. Whoa. Hey. Come on, don't sleep in the time of summer, man. Don't sleep in the time of harvest. You bring shame to the Father. If you sleep in, wake up tonight. Young person, wake up. You heard this message over and over and over and over, but your life hasn't changed. You come to this tabernacle year in, year out, but you haven't changed because you camped at the outer court. You settled for 30 fold. So I'm asking you, what's your level of expectation in these meetings? This is the last meeting, man. You better reach out. If you didn't make peace with God, make peace with God. Say, Lord, tonight is the last meeting. I feel the presence of God. I feel the anointing moving already through the building. So, Lord, don't pass me by. If you're healing, don't heal without me. If you're saving, Lord, don't save without me. If you're baptizing with the Holy Ghost, don't baptize with the Holy Ghost without me. If there's going to be a revival here in Trinidad, let it start with me, Lord. If there's going to be a revival in Nigeria, let it start with me, Lord. My God. I want you to hear this. So that caterpillar eating the bride tree took it all the way to the roots. Cut it all the way back. Everything. Cut the tree right off like he did Christ Jesus, the bridegroom. Cut the bride right down and started out in creeds and denomination. The same old bug. But watch. Does Brother Branham stop there? He says, but oh, Glory. Oh, listen to this prophet, get excited, man. 
And we, we don't want to say amen. So, he says, oh, glory. But in the roots was the predestinated seed. So when that caterpillar, palmer worm, locust, they get to eat that tree, the life went down. And they went to the way? In the roots. He says, roots was predestinated seed. The royal seed of Abram. He cannot die. Oh, listen, man. They try so many times to stop this, but this cannot die. It's like that rocket shoots out five stars and they try and stop it there, then it shoots there. When they get there, it shoots there. Brother, they can't stop it. Come on. You will not die, brother. You were the predestinated roots. Your life was hiding there. And God said, what did he say? His next words. You cannot die. The word was in the roots with the promise. I will restore, say the Lord. What? All the years that the caterpillar cut off, all the locusts eaten, all that the rest of the bugs eat up, I will restore it back, say the Lord. I don't care how many years your life has been dry. God is going to restore it, brother. He took your joy. He's going to restore your joy. He took your children. He's going to restore your children. He took away your, your, your health. He's going to restore Restore your health tonight. You will not die. I refuse to die. Because there is life in me. There is life in you. You shall not die. But live to declare the works of almighty God. I refuse to die brother. They said a few years is finished. But God gave me grace. Another chance. He pulled me up, brother Isaac. Another chance. He'll give you another chance, man. He'll pull you up, brother. Hallelujah. You shall not die. You hear what I'm saying? I'm prophesying over you. You shall not die. Say it after me. I shall not die. Say it again. It's because there's life in you. And I don't care how big a concrete slab fell on you. Because there's life in you. I seen a blade of grass. One blade. One blade, brother. I'm not speaking of many. One blade. Push through that rock and you see it crack a cement block. And out will come life, brother. Because there's life inside. You can't stop life. You can't hide these people from the presence. Brother, they, are, they got life in them. The seed has power to transform itself. And if they can't come up, they grow on the side. And they come out, brother. You'll come out anyhow, brother. I don't care what's laying on you. What your circumstances. What you are under. Brother, you are coming forth because there's life in you. Hallelujah. Man, when I look at your faces, man. Hallelujah. It gives me courage to know that this lovely bunch of born again people has got life in them, brother. And God give me the privilege, brother Delhi, to preach to them, to have ministers like you. Brother Obert, hallelujah, man. To share this pulpit. Woo. God is going to restore the second seed bride back to the first. Like what Peter had, we must have. What Brother Branham had, we must have. You know, you can make all sorts of claims. I'm this, I'm that, I'm that. But show me your works. Stephen said, man, Jesus, you crucified him. But he was a man approved of God. With what? Signs and wonders. Jesus said, if you can't believe me, believe my works. Show me your works. Then I'll believe you, man. But don't say you have that and you have that and you have that, but you got nothing to show me. If you have what Brother Branham have, speak a squirrel, speak a missing limb, speak to the blinded eyes. Then I'll say, no, you got something, brother. You see, Brother Branham, Brother Peter was a silver dollar, brother. Olu, it takes a hundred pennies 
to make a silver dollar. And they're still not a silver dollar. They're only pennies worth. Let me leave that. God is going to restore the second seed bride back to the first. She will be exactly like the first church was. With every redemptive blessing flowing through her. The full manifestation of Christ in the church. They will be the self same person. Same signs. Same wonders. Same miracles. Same ministry. Same in every way. Okay. So yeah, I come to this quote. Spoken word. Oh, it's the original seed. See now why I've been so zealous of the kind of seed that I now here he don't say so planted for the body there's a big difference between sowing and planting brother says planted for the body the rain is going to fall pretty soon I mean the real rain and it's going to have seed to fall on I hope you see it do you understand our congregation says amen it will be the living word that's what we're looking for, Brother Ovid. That's what we're looking for, Brother Olu. The living word, Brother Peter. Not just word, 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 word. We want to see the spirit with the word, Brother. That's what Brother Branham had. That's what Peter and them had. On the day of Pentecost, they had spirit and word together. He says here, it will be the living word as it was at the beginning. The spoken word of God have his power for it's in him, in his own body, work in his own way. Look to the promises that God gave this body. Now we're coming to something. We're coming to Mount Zion now. And Mount Zion is showdown. Showdown. Who's bride and who's not bride? Who's seed and who's not seed? Brother says those two vines intertwine their branches even. They grow together. Brother says they rejoice by the same rain. You ain't seen nothing yet. You think you've seen jealousy? You watch when the dynamics is poured out, brother. They rejoice just as much as you rejoice. Because they're also waiting for the rain. But there's a different life in you. You got a different image in you. And I check the word uh, zealous. It means fervent, ardent, fanatical, passionate, impassionate, devout, devoted, committed, dedicated, hardcore, enthusiastic, eager, keen, over keen. My God. So you mean I can be fanatical? It says here, caring, vigorous, energetic, intense, fierce. A zealous worker. That's what it means. The prophet was zealous of the kind of seed that he planted for the body. He knew the real rain is coming and it has to have seed to fall on. And he said, I hope I live to see it. It was so close, he said, I can almost feel it. He was hoping it happens in his day. But God didn't allow him to happen in his day. So you mean what he had wasn't the fullness. The fullness comes now at harvest time. He's off the sea now, but there's another people in the land. Oh my. Who under their messenger becomes the final voice to the final age. They will speak for God. And they will be God's mouthpiece. The real can come in and you see the SF seed. I hope I love to see it. It's so close I almost can feel it. Look at the promises God gave this body. Now, if you go to Matthew 13, the parable of the sower, I already explained it there. And I'm not speaking of thornies and rockies and, and I'm speaking of the good ground that yielded three phases of fruit. Can you imagine? If it's a good ground, it should have been all hundred. Am I right? But how come he made a difference? Go read it there. And you, I couldn't find a quote where Brabham speaks about the 30 fold. Every time he prays, he says, Lord, hundred fold. I went through all the quotes. Maybe someone will find it. I don't know. But every time he speaks of that, Matthew 13, he says, Lord, give us hundredfold. And tonight, that's what I'm looking for. Hundredfold. I'm not settling for less, Brother Olu. If, you, if that's your level of expectancy, that's up to you. But I came for a hundredfold. Now, Brahman says there's a difference between sowing and planting. 
planted special seeds for the bride body. Because he knew the real rain is coming. It must have the seed to fall on. Sowing. So when you are sowing, as far as I know, the, the guy just walks and throws the seed. That's sowing. But he says when you plant, he says you dig a hole. You dig a hole there and you, put, you, you plant it. Now, I'm not doing away with Matthew 13. Don't get me wrong. But Brother Ben says here, planting, you dig a hole and you put the seed in the ground. Now, listen. So, I'm going to read the scripture. Psalm 1 that we always read. Blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff. So that's where Boaz was, right? On the threshing floor. And that's where they throw the, the wheat up and the wind blows the chaff away. Come on, you must be spiritual now. So that's where Boaz was in the threshing floor, threshing the wheat, throwing it up, and the wind will come. That Amoya, shoo, blow the shuck away, the tears. <coughs> it says, The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Now listen to the quote, planting the vine and where to plant it. Blessed is a man that will not assemble himself with these coffers, making fun, calling the true church a bunch of fanatics. He shall be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water. God has put him in a choice spot. Oh, I hope you get this. Don't miss this, please, man. God has put you in a choice spot. His fruit shall not wither. He shall bring forth his leaf and his fruits in his season. Watch how David wondered that this man is blessed. He will be planted, not just set out. You know, I like seeing anything that's planted. This is the prophet now. So don't argue with me. If you want to argue, check up with the prophet. <laughs> then he says, your wisdom... Versus faith. He says it wasn't set out. He shall be like a tree that's set out, transposed from this to that. He was planted. What predestinated that thought of God before the foundation of the world placed him there. Not stuck out, not by chance, but was planted, predestinated. What? To the rivers of water. Now look where you planted, man. His root shall not wither. Oh, the process again. Oh, hallelujah. Though he dies, I'll raise him up again at the last days. That's right. He is predestinated to be there, not just by chance. He was predestined to catch the word when it was sold and shall be right there when it sticks. She is there. He's planted, not just stuck down. He's actually planted. That's right. There's a lot of difference. Now, this is a prophet. Sticking a stick in the ground, then planting something, it's different. The seed was planted. It found its own root holes. When the waters begin to come in and break forth its life, the spirit. So that's what the water is, to give the seed life. So that's why I'm looking and I hear a sound of abundance of rain. He says, because the rain, the, the, the rain is coming, then he turns around and says, I mean the real rain. You mean he's making a difference between a shower and the real rain? The real rain, the harvest rain, the latter rain. That's going to come, brother. But it must have seed. So what did the prophet do? He sowed the seed. He put in seeds there for the body. That's why everyone can't take it. Oh, come on, man. Hallelujah. I feel like running around this hall, man. Listen, man, if you realize God plants you in a choice spot. 
Your leaves cannot wither. Your fruits cannot wither. Right, Brother Ulu? That's what you were saying. You cannot. The seed in you is not weak and strong. The seed is strong. It's going to overcome. But the Isaac showed the difference of his power. There's just the earth that's slain, but you're going to pierce it, brother. Sure. It says, restoration of the bride. And David saw it. And he spoke and he said, blessed is that man. And notice he said he could not die. His leaves would, would, uh, would not wither. No matter what they do, they'll never kill that tree. Why? It's where he's planted. You see, they tried to kill him, but they can never kill it. Because it's where he's planted. Oh, God, I love this. He's so beautiful, man. And notice he said he could not die. His leaves would not uh, wither. No, no, no matter what they do, they'll never kill that tree. Why? It's where he's planted. That's what does it. It's where he's planted. He's planted by the rivers of water. Now notice David said, his roots won't die. Hallelujah. What if a man is planted in such a thing by the river? Where the springs, he says, nine different springs feed in, into him. My, what the establishment he has. Do you realize what, the, what you have? My, what an establishment he has. And a man that's planted by the river, the rivers of water. He says, one water, one spirit. They are gifts of healing. Same spirit, gifts of prophecy. Same spirit and the same spirit, but many gifts and one giver. Oh, hallelujah. Now, I like this, John 7, 38. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living. You must believe on him as the scriptures has said. Not what some pastor is saying, but as the scriptures have said. Now the prophet's word is hanging over Rome. And we know what Rome is supposed to do. The prophet's word is, is hanging right at this time over the Antichrist and what he's supposed to do. He says, the prophet's word is hanging over the world council of churches and they, what they're supposed to do. The prophet's word is hanging right over a bunch of sodomites. And Brother Peter was telling me they had a gay a parade just yesterday in London there was a gay parade so that they think they're marching and coming out of the closet meantime that's the word that must be fulfilled the prophet said the sodomites must be revealed in this day so over them is hanging the word of Malachi 4 the prophet's word is hanging over Los Angeles sure there's a prophecy hanging of this man hanging over Los Angeles that she'll go down brother and now that she was shaken Maybe that's the final loose. Maybe the next one will take it down. Where are you going to stand? Like Brother Ola asked, what is your story, the story of your life? Sure. Man, I feel the power of God in this place. And right now, the word of the prophet is hanging over the bride. Right now, this word is hanging over you, brother. Right now, this word, there will be a church. There will be a bride. There will be a people. The same word is hanging over you tonight. There will be a bride, Brother Dilly. There will be, there will be one uh, without spot, without wrinkle. The same word that's hanging over Los Angeles is hanging over you tonight. That you will be the bride. You will be the people in this land uh, who will become the final voice. So this word hangs over me tonight. And that's what I'm preaching from. Uh, that's what I'm holding on to, Brother Theo. Is this word of the prophet. They've got to come a bride. I don't think I'm going to go long tonight. My brother Cosmos, I already feel something telling me to cut off. His presence is here already. And the people will need to break through. So give them their privilege. Oh, what a presence. Wow. What an anointing. Oh, God. The spoken word is original seed. The Gentile dispensation is to be finished with the church age when this anointed messenger arrives. Of course, he will plant the seed of the entire Bible. Brother Olu, plump from the serpent to the messenger in the former reign. Then will be rejected by the enormous people as this, as his forefather John and Elijah, as was spoken by our Lord. 
This message he planted the seed from of the entire Bible. Another original branch is coming forth. Scriptural signs of the times. But if that tree ever puts forth another branch, it will be another book of Acts, brother. That's the story of our lives. We want the same pay. We're not settling for less. I'm not settling, brother. I want to see what brother Branham had. I want to see. And remember, he was the wave chief that was waved over the people, right? And they say, according to the Levitical law, why is he waved the first corn that comes to maturity? Why is it waved? Do you know why? To say that the rest of the crop, yay, the rest of the crop is also coming to maturity. So, Brother Branham, our first wave chief, he came, Brother Olu. What about the people behind him that's in the harvest? What about them, brother? You also come in, man. Hear what I say. Hang on. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. That's why he was waved as an acceptance, Brother Anthony, that the rest of the crop is also. That's why we have the wave chief. Go read it in Leviticus 23 there. I will restore, say the Lord. I will do, I will bring her back to her original condition. I will bring her back to her original doctrine. I will bring her back to the original word. I will break every denomination pieces. I will bring her back to my word. God will not man, not man. Did you see that? God will. Everything he's saying here, yeah, God will. Not man. And this branch cannot bear fruit of her own. Not until it's energized by the vine. And that's what I'm looking for. And he says here in Matthew 15 verse 13. But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly father has not planted shall be rooted up. And I'm here tonight. Every false doctrine, every false interpretation will be rooted up, brother. Everything that's in your life that's not of God, it wasn't planted by God. That cigarettes, that alcohol, that lust, that pornography wasn't planted by God. So everything that's not planted by God, God is going to uproot it. So tonight, let him uproot it. Tell him, God, open up, take this out of me. He's going to uproot it, pluck it out, deliver you, set you free. Is going to uproot that sickness, that depression, that filthy habits, that malice, that hatred, that oughts and grudges, that unbelief. He's going to uproot it. Hallelujah. Oh, brother, I hear the sound of abundance of rain. Can't you hear it, brother? We already have a cloud. Oh, hallelujah. There's going to be a cloud burst, brother. We didn't only see a cloud in this day, brother Nick, with the size of a man's hand. But we have a cloud of seven angels. Woo, hallelujah. They form the face of Christ. So chuck away your umbrellas, man. Why are you sitting here with an umbrella? Chuck it away. Be soaked in the rain. Soak me, Lord. Fill me. Oh, God. I'm going to skip all this. I'm going to go here to something. I want to come to you. My, there's so much here. I'll just leave it. Oh, my. Oh, he says all this background has only been laying a foundation for a short, quick message. Hallelujah. Listen, don't give up. He says we on the, he says, uh, listen to this quote here. Oh, my. I feel his presence is here, man. We might as well call that prayer line, brother, over it. My. Hallelujah. Yo. Listen what he says. And I believe that right, that the church is now standing on the threshold of the greatest vindication of omnipotence that the world has ever known. You want to go back to the world, but right now, he's ready to pour out his fullness. He's ready to pour down the rain. I hear the sound of abundance of rain. So we're right on the precipice. We're right on the edge. Don't go back. Don't give up. Now I want you to listen to those two quotes I'm going to read. And we'll close out by the, by the Ovid. His presence is here. His anointing is here. He says, faith 
by experience. He's discerning now. This man right at the back here suffering with back trouble. Right there at the end of the seat. Lord help me. Mr. Anderson from Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. You know who I'm talking about, don't you? Your back trouble, sir, has left you now. Raise up your hands and praise God. You see, God always wants a response from us. When you say they're dead, you're going to stay dead. But if you talk to God, he's going to talk back to you. You want God to talk to you, but you never talk to him. But it's so easy in the presence of God. Speak to him, let him speak back to you. Touch him, let him touch you. Reach out, let him reach back. Make love, let him make love back to you. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, man, listen to this. He says here, oh, I feel that anointing. Come on, he says, Mr. Anderson from Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? Your back trouble, sir, has left you. Raise up your hands, praise God, and go on your road and be made well through Jesus Christ's name. Do you believe he goes on discerning? The spirit keeps moving right behind that man. There sits a nervous trouble. You believe that God heals you? Raise up your hand, accept it if you believe it. It's all over now. There's a kidney trouble, lady. Right back there with a kidney condition. You believe that God makes you well, lady? If you do, raise your hands. Accept it. Respond to God's call. This is what he's saying. Now, this is what I feel. If you didn't respond, he has an opportunity tonight. He has a chance to respond and say, God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to accept your call. He says here, respond to God's call. Then he turns around. He says, you missed it. I'll show you whether you missed it or not. It falls on a lady sitting right here with a handkerchief over her mouth. This lady sitting right here. Her back trouble too. That's right. Lady didn't it? Yes, sir. You just come from an operation, a cancer operation. That's right. Your name is Virginia. That's right. You heal Virginia. Jesus Christ makes you well. Then he goes back to Mr. Anderson, right? He says, you missed it, Mr. Anderson, because you didn't respond. Oh, brother, I tell you, 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 better, you better respond tonight. If you feel that spirit calling, speaking tonight, you better respond. Say, God, I hear the call. I hear the cry. I feel the Holy Spirit condemning me. I want to respond. He said, you missed it, Mr. Anderson, because you didn't respond. See how, how much you can unbelieve see the sovereignty of God. Wow. That's why I say tonight where you stand in there, you better make that your altar tonight before you come. Speak to him. Listen to this brother over it. Make the valley full of ditches. He says, a lady in my church Mrs. Weber, she was dying with TB. She was in a sanatorium at this last stages. They sent her home to die. Said there's nothing could be done for her. Mrs. Grace Weber in Jeffersonville. She lived just beyond the tabernacle. And she, she's got five or six little children. So the angel of the Lord come to me that night. And said, go tell Mr. Weber. Mrs. Weber. And tell Mr. Weber rather. To get things ready for he's going to be left with those children in his hands. For his wife's going. Well, I went and told Mr. Weber. I told his little girl, Jean Rose, uh, which is a nurse now. She was a little bitty fellow then. She's a young lady now. It's been seven years ago or more. I said, now Jeannie, your mother's going to die. She can't live but a little while longer. Watch. Two days after that or three days, there were some ladies. Listen. Please, listen, stand up. I'm closing with this. I want you to stand and I want you to listen to this. Because you have to respond. So he says, two days after that, three days, there were some ladies from the government department there where she worked, come and Grace Weber, if you could only have Brother Bill to pray. She said, if I could only have Brother Bill to pray for me once more. She said, I seen when my cousin Opal was healed with that cancer. The doctor just gave her till morning to live. And the daughter's a nurse also. She said, 
and the girls from uh, the government watch you now here come our work colleagues and they come and run down brother ben we said what she worked with her said there ain't nothing to that guy said he's nothing but a hypocrite said that's all that religion is it's just a bunch of fake fanatism now watch mrs weber now watch her response hey brother I tell you your faith is going to raise because you see why the same angel that spoke to brother Branham is here tonight. And you have the liberty to speak to him. But let me finish a quote here. And so Mr. Weber is nothing but a fake religion is just a bunch of fake fanatism. So, and so Mr. Weber said, "Look, I'm dying." and i know that but i just won't stand still for that she said i know better than that she said i be, i live right here around the city around that man all the time i seen him from a child grown up she said i know you can call it a fake if you want to she said but i've seen it just as so much as seen god heal the people and she said and i know the man's life and i know it's the truth what what's her response Sometimes we are afraid to take up for the message with our work colleagues but here Mrs. Weber is busy dying. Brother Branham already told Mr. Weber get ready. Pay your funeral. You're going to sit with your kids. But yes, she takes up for Brother Branham. She says, "I know that man, man. He grew up in front of me. He prayed for my cousin, man, and she got healed. And I know if he pray once for for me, I'll be healed." Oh my. Listen. She said and I know the man's life and I know it's the truth and it happened to be the angel of the Lord heard that. Hey brother, you think you're alone? You walking with angels, man. The angel is watching what you're going to say, what you're going to do. In this harvest time the angel is here. So he's watching it and he wants to hear what is your comment? Wow. Thanks. Watch. And the angel of the Lord heard that. That very night, sitting on the side of my chair in the room, after I got up, I went and got a drink of water. This is the prophet. About three o'clock in the morning. And sitting on the chair, I, he said, I seen him come walking through the door. Here come the same angel that heard her say, You can't call him a fake. You got to be careful what you say about this message. Be careful what you write about this message. He's not a fake, brother. This man walked with angels, man. He walked with the angel on the right side. He walked with the angel and spoke face to face with him. That's what we're looking for, brother. That's our story. That's our pay. That's what we want, brother. The angel of God and I believe that angel is here tonight. and is watching what you saying Brother I just watch you now he gets thirsty 3 o'clock in the morning he goes for a glass of water but while he's drinking the water he sits in his chair there said so the next thing he heard the angel come walking through the door the same angel that told him Mrs Weber's going to die go tell Mr Weber but because of her response come on because of her response oh i like that man you see you got to respond to him that's where the difference come so he says and i sat inside the chair in the room and i got up and i went and i got a drink of water about 3 o'clock in the morning sitting in the chair and i seen him come walking through the door he said tomorrow is sunday They're going to pick Mrs. Weber up and bring her down. She'll be sitting at the right hand side, far back in the tabernacle. Said I heard her and tell her I heard her. Tell her I heard her. He 
meeting Sunday today. It's the last meeting. This is a prayer line. Tell her she'll be coming to service. She'll be sitting at the right hand, right at the back there. But tell her I heard what she said. So you see, you're not alone, man. When you stand up for this message, God must stand up for you. When you take sides with Jesus, Jesus takes sides with you. He's a way maker. He's a miracle worker. He's light in the darkness. My God, that is who he is. And tonight is here to touch somebody's life. Turn you around. Tell her I heard her. I heard what she said. Tell her. Thus say the Lord. Watch the angel now change. Thus say the Lord. She live and not die. Tell her, she, I heard what she said. She will not die, but she will live. He first pronounced her dead. But yeah, because she took up and she responded and took up for the message of the hour. She said, I know that man. He's not a fanatic. He, I, he grew up in front of me. I know if he pray once more, I know I'll be healed. Oh, God. Thus say the Lord, she, I want you to close your eyes and just bow your head. Raise your hands to him. And I want you to zero in on Christ before we call this prayer line. I'm going to hand the mic over to our pastor Theo. But I want you to have this opportunity. Tell him what you always wanted to tell him. Just open up. Your wife don't have to know. Your husband don't have to know. It's you and Christ alone tonight. And he says that angel will do the same thing for you tonight. Tell him, God, I love you. I love this message. I love it, Lord. Oh, God. Oh, speak to him, please. He wants to hear from you. He wants to hear your cry. He wants to hear your plea tonight. He wants to know that you're opening up. He's a miracle worker. He's a way maker. He's light in your darkness tonight. Hallelujah. He's going to uproot everything that's not of God. Hallelujah. God bless you. Speak to him now, please. Wherever you're there, in the back, just stand up and speak to him. Raise your hands to him. Tell him what you want to tell him. Tell him what's in your heart. Open up. He wants to hear that angel is here tonight. He says that same angel is here tonight. God bless you. I worship you. I worship you. Oh, you are here, touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. And you are here, touching every heart. Ah. I worship yes. you. Yes, Lord. Glory. I worship you. You are here. Hallelujah. Oh, you are here. And I worship you, I worship you, you are here, oh, Jesus you are here, to fill and worship you, oh help me Lord, I worship you.
touching it. Oh, I worship you. I worship. I worship you. Oh, worship him tonight. same way you came oh hallelujah harvest time harvest time outpouring time deliverance time redemption time sealing time breakthrough time healing time sickness has got to go tonight Sickness has to go tonight. 
That demon of cancer has to go. That demon of diabetes has to go. High blood pressure has to go. Tonight. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, let's just stay reverent tonight. You appreciate God's servant, Mother Raymond Thompson. 